Morning, everyone, and thank you very much, Paul, for giving us the opportunity to um, host this today. In typical fashion, my IT is not working, so my screen is completely blank. Apologies for that. Um, I can't believe, actually, it's probably just over a year since we all last got together a bit of face to face. It's incredible, isn't it, Paul? But um, nonetheless, we've all managed to adapt and do things a bit differently. Um, Metrobank is very focused this year on um, supporting trading businesses, even more so than normal. I mean, historically, when I used to meet Bitter members, they always um, would think of Metrobank with our big stores on the high street and possibly um, that we were very retail focused. Well, we are retail focused, but we're also very business focused, hence the purpose of this uh, seminar today. And I'm delighted Kevin Craven, who heads up our invoice finance uh, business, and David Ginn, who heads up our asset finance business, are able to come and talk to us today about what we can do to support your businesses. And I hope Paul in the future at our next face-to-face -face gathering, um, David and Kevin can come along and tell us some success stories. So I'm gonna hand over to Kevin now. So Kevin, uh, over to you. Hi everyone, good morning. Um, I'm going to start by attempting to share my screen. Um, so let me see if we can do that first of all. And hopefully that will now have worked. If any, anyone could let me know that that has worked and I'm, I'm now sharing the screen. That's hard. Yeah. So let me introduce myself. Um, I'm Kevin Craven and, and as Brigine has, uh, has said, I head up the invest finance business here at Metro. Been with Metro in this role since 2016, late 2016 and before then spent uh, more years and I care to admit in the IF industry. I'm working with a range of providers from you know, a couple of the, the, the larger high street banks through to some of the smaller independent providers in, in, the, in the market. And I've worked with customers with, with facilities ranging from 25,000 to 500 million pounds and, and all points in between. Um, and when you've been in the industry as long as I have, it, it's easy to assume that people know more about what you do, and in this case, how the product works, that is actually the case. So what we wanted to do this morning is just give an overview of invoice finance and, and, and the difference between the, the, the different core products that exist within the market, and as well as a flavor of how we do things here at Metro. So let's start with an overview. I'm gonna look at what it is, who it's for, kind of businesses that use invoice finance, and. And then we're, we're going to look in a bit, with a bit more detail at the two main uh, variants within the product. So what is it? Right. So it's a way of funding your business. It's a, if, if a, essentially a finance facility that allows you to unlock the money tied up in the amounts owing to you by your customers um, by the invoice finance provider releasing an advance payment of up to 90% against the value of those invoices can be used by businesses selling on credit terms to other businesses. And, and this is an important point, invoicing once the, the goods have been delivered or the service completed in full. It, it works much less well when the, the underlying transaction is a, is a longer term project with milestone payments. Um, it, it works much better when there's a clear cut end point uh, at which point the invoice is raised. So lots of businesses in the UK and globally use, the, use some form of IF. Um, the, invoice, the, the UK is one of the largest um, markets internationally for invoice finance. Normally there's around about 40,000 businesses of all shapes and sizes using the product. I say normally because of course we've been living through anything but normal times over the last uh, year or so. And the market, as you would imagine, has been hit very hard in the last year. Um, our customers simply have sold less to their customers. Um, so there's been a reduction in the amount of funding need and, and funding available. Um, and then we're, we're going to talk in a moment now in, in a little bit more detail on the two main products within, within the invoice finance product set, uh, factoring and invoice discounting. So let's have a look at, at factoring first of all. So the start point, of course, is 
is for a sale of, of goods or a provision of a service from, from our customer to their customer, their trade debtor. And at the same time as our customer sending the invoice to their customer, what we allow them to do is use our online system to notify the invoice to us. Um, and at that point, up to 90% of the value of the invoice is made available for our customers to use immediately. Now, they don't need to, to use that full 90%. You can use as much or as, as little of that as they need <clears throat> um, to help support their business. Alongside that, what we do with, a, uh, with our factoring customers is we provide a full comprehensive credit control function for them. So we're sending out statements at each month end, we're sending out chasing letters as the invoices fall due, um, and we're making calls to those customers, to, to those trade debtors as well, to remind them that the invoice is, is, is due and to pick up any queries that they might have. Um, then once those debtors make that, end pay, make that payment for the invoice, that comes directly into us and releases further funds to our customers. Effectively, what we haven't already advanced against the invoice, less, uh, less our charges. Um, once that happens, the whole process starts again and it revolves on a, on a day-to-day basis. So you, you've continually got this process of new invoices being raised, credit control activity taking place, invoices being, being paid and collected and, and all, the, all those steps releasing funding for our customers. So that's factoring, typically used by Typically used by smaller businesses, typically used by business, you know, many new start businesses as well. But there are some <clears throat> very large organisations that um, you, uh, outsource their credit management function to uh, factoring providers um, because they understand that they can get some real, real benefits from doing that, real benefits from using a, a dedicated credit management function that uh, a factoring business can provide. So let's compare that to invoice discounting. Uh, of course, the process is, uh, is very similar and ultimately it relies on that uh, raising of invoices and notification of invoices to, to us as the invoice finance provider. The difference here is that uh, invoice discounting typically is a, is a confidential product. So it's not disclosed to our customers' customers, our, our involvement, uh, they're not made aware of our involvement. And because we're not providing a credit management function, uh, for those customers, all we need to see is the bulk value of the invoices that have been raised in any one particular day or week, whatever period the customer chooses to send that information through to us. Again, they use our online system to tell us about those invoices. And again, up to 90% of the value of that invoice is made available for them to, to use immediately. And, uh, and as we say, the key difference then is that rather than we at Metro providing that credit management function, with invoice discounting customers, uh, they retain control of their own credit control and they'll chase the invoices as they fall due. And again, those debtors will pay into Metro, Metro Bank, but they'll pay in via a dedicated trust account um, and, the, and the additional funding is then released that way. And again, the process starts again with new invoices. So <clears throat> that's a really sort of whistle stop overview of the two main products, invoice, uh, invoice discounting and factoring, but really it isn't more complicated than that. It's very easy to, to over-engineer these things, but the process is as simple as that and ultimately relies on, on our customers raising invoices, telling us about those invoices and we as a, as a, as a provider making funding available against those invoices for them to use in their business. So how do we do things here at Metro? What's our, what's our particular approach to the market? So <clears throat> we can fund invoices to, excuse me, <clears throat> to uh, debtors that are based in the UK and abroad. Uh, we'll fund invoices to, uh, to our customers, customers in Western Europe, North America, and, <clears throat> and some other territories too. <clears throat> Whenever we enter into a new agreement with our customers, We'd always recognised that it was important to, to uh, take a stance, I think, in, in, in terms of the, the value that we could provide and the, and the service that we could provide to our customers. So we made the decision a number of years ago to always offer any new customer a 12-month commitment on day one from us. 
So we would sign up to a 12 month deal. These are the terms of the facility and we commit to those for 12 months. But in return, we only ask for a one month commitment for many new customers that joins us. We don't tie our, look to tie our customers in because we're really confident that once they're on board with us, they'll understand the value of the service that we provide and the way that we, and our, our approach to invoice finance and, and they'll stay with us because they want to, not because they're tied into contractual terms and can't get out uh, any earlier. One of the things that we can do as well is provide um, protection against the risk of, of debtor failure, of, of our customers' customers being unable to pay um, via a, dad, a bad debt protection uh, uh, product. So we, and that can sit alongside the invoice finance facility and give our customers the comfort that if their customers can't pay then they're protected from the, 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 the loss that they would have otherwise in, have incurred with that. Uh, and then finally, at the heart of everything we do is, is a relationship approach. We, we, we do aim to uh, provide a really different service than is provided elsewhere in the market by making sure that our relationship managers are local to their customers and have small enough portfolios that they can get to know their customers understand their needs and work with them to, to support them as they go through their journey. So that's the sort of headlines of, of how we think we do things. But let's, uh, let's look at now at sort of what some of our customers say. So we're just gonna conclude with a couple of, of case studies of uh, facilities that we put in place relatively recently. And, and the customers have been very kind, both in providing some, some feedback for us and, and allowing us to, to to use our details in this way. Um, so the, the, the first uh, customer that we work with is a, is a customer based up in the Northwest, Yozuki, um, who supply health supplements worldwide. And as you can imagine, that's a, that's a really buoyant market and, uh, and I think is, um, is, is gonna continue to grow for some time. Um, and because of their growth, they've outgrown their, their existing funding arrangement. So we worked really closely uh, and this is a, a really important part of the way we do things. We don't just do things as a standalone invoice finance business within the Metro Bank family. We work as one team and we work with our colleagues within the commercial side of, of uh, Metro Bank, um, along with our credit teams to deliver a, a, a joined up one-stop solution to, to the customer, providing a, a new 800,000 pound invoice finance facility alongside an 800,000 pound Sybil's facility um, and the day-to-day the -day banking, of course. And the, the customer were delighted with that and they actually sort of posted this themselves. Um, so that the quote they've given there um, shows the benefits that uh, an invoice finance can, can provide in, in, in generating working capital for business and supporting their growth aspirations. So I'm really, really pleased with the way that that worked. And um, final case study from us, um, again, another customer, staff support services. If essentially a recruitment business, and uh, as you can imagine, we, we do a lot of work in the recruitment sector, providing uh, temporary staff agencies with, uh, uh, with support. Uh, again, this business, had, uh, again, given the sector that, that it was in in the last year, you can imagine that there was a significant demand on their services um, and they needed they needed a new facility with us. Um, and what was, um, what was interesting here was um, their growth surpassed their own expectations. And about the last minute, they needed an extra 200,000 pound. We'd originally looked at providing them with a 400,000 pound facility based on what their original forecast had said. And they, they soon outgrew that by, by the order of 50%. And we were able to accommodate that, uh, provide the 600K facility limit, um, and on the back of that, again, they provided the quote there just to highlight how well that's allowed them to, to grow their business and, uh, and to, to deliver the service that they, they want to to their end customer. And that is that. We've, we've given some contact details here as well. Um, uh, obviously, as I say, I head up the team, but Andy Knight, who's, who's with us today as well, he's the <laughs> department uh, director covering the, uh, the London area. So please do um, contact us if there's anything that we can help you with. Um, and I think we'll circulate the slides, I guess, and, and these contact details following the presentations. So great. And, um, and um, that is Invoice Finance. I'm not sure if there are any 
questions that have either come in through them. Um, absolutely not clever enough to work out how to, to see the questions on the on the screen. No. But um, I mean, there is there was one question, but I think um, Richard Hill has actually answered it in the chat. OK. He was super efficient. Um, Paul asked, a member of an SM, um, SME joinery company wants it in what impact will invoice finance have on the bottom line margin? What cost do they need to make provisions for to enable them to use this facility? And how quickly can it be turned on? Right. Um, cost obviously is 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 a is a difficult one to to answer because it depends on a number of different variables. Clearly, there is a cost, and the two main um, charges for any invoice finance facility are the, the service charge and the the discount margin, which is effectively the interest margin. So the the, the amount of discount charge or interest margin that a, a customer will pay will absolutely depend on the size of the facility that they have um, and how much they use that facility. So it's based on uh, it's based on their actual drawings under the facility. Um, the service charge will depend on whether it's a, a factoring facility or an invoice discounting facility. With a, uh, a factoring facility, of course, um, the invoice finance provider is providing a more comprehensive service for the customer, um, and and the charges will be linked to that credit management service. Uh, with invoice discounting, it's a uh, a simpler um, product. And um, uh, and the service charges are really just a, a designed to cover the, the the cost of administering the facility from the IF provider. Um, so different charges in terms of how quickly it can be set up. It, it really all depends. It I mean it can be as little as a week. Um, you know that's an exceptional uh, time frame. Uh, uh, ordinarily it takes a it usually allow sort of six weeks or so start to finish. But um, customers that have a need and have the information available for us to make a decision and, and work with us can get the facility on board much more quickly than than the sort of six weeks or so that um, is, is perhaps more typical. Fantastic. Thank you. Can, I, can I ask a question as well is in terms of the, the uh, reputation of the product, um, how has that changed in the perception of uh, invoice factoring in the marketplace? And how do we as an organization uh, best communicate this to our members? Uh, in terms of its reputation as a product, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a funny one. That I joined the industry a long time ago, and um, at that point, I mean, you know, nearly thirty years ago, and at that point, there was talk about the product having been seen historically as a lender of last resort, um, and um, but that that stigma was was going away now, and people were understanding the value that it adds. Um, 30 years later, still having the same questions. Um, and I, and, I, uh, it, and it's, it's a little bit demoralizing, of course, but I think it, it, it speaks to us as a market about <clears throat> how well we communicate. The reality is, and as I sort of outlined at, at, the, at the start, um, I've, worked with, I've worked with a number of very large you know, international corporates who use receivables finance as a, as a mechanism for funding their business. And it is funny, actually, when you work, I've worked with some you know, very large um, corporates um, and the, um, the, um, the, uh, they don't talk about invoice finance. They talk about factoring, funnily enough. Um, so it sort of goes full circle. In factoring tends to be used by smaller businesses. You talk to a global multinational and they'll talk about factoring. And it, it just works. It just works because it's, a, it's, an, it's a, an efficient form of funding and it can generate more funding than um, the um, uh, than, than other bank facilities often can. Um, and those big businesses that use the facility, um, they're people that know what they're doing and know how to run a business. Uh, and of course, it would uh, it, they they wouldn't they wouldn't use it if it uh, if it didn't work for them. And the other question that I have is bearing in mind that Bitta is now um, a national uh, based organization that has um, chapters from Scotland right down to Devon and Cornwall. Um, how easy is it access to in terms of um, a mir mirroring um, Metro Bank in that regard? Is this a national offer? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I'm sort of slightly fortunate in as much as my um, um, team has, has always been an, a national team. 
Um, and, I, and I've had people based up in, I have a, uh, I always had a team based in Sheffield. Um, and, um, and, and now with the stores, Metro have opened in Manchester and Liverpool and Birmingham and Sheffield, uh, we've got a much broader um, ability to um, support customers up and down the country. And the, the Yozuki example that we use just there, uh, they're a Northwest based, Northwest based company. We work with our Manchester commercial team uh, and my team up in Manchester uh, to support them. And um, you know, we, uh, and again, we keep that local local presence in Scotland. Uh, you know, uh, 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 we have to uh, confess is uh, is not is not a territory that we have uh, presence in. But we do have one or two Scottish customers. Um, but um, but um, but certainly within the within England, um, we, uh, we we have a much better coverage now nationally than we than uh, was the case a few years ago. Um, Paul, uh, it's Brigine here. Can I just um, make a, a, a little comment on your uh, question number one about the historic maybe brand or legacy issues uh, around the, the product? You know, I agree with Kevin, maybe 25, 30 years ago. I think what would be really reassuring to some of your members is if we share um, with you, Paul, some of the recent awards that Metrobank have um have won around treating customers fairly and professionally and all those sorts of solid good things um, because those awards are all independently chosen um, and, and they give a really good benchmark of our culture and values so very happy to share that Paul if that would help. Yeah it would help greatly and I mean we look forward also um, to being back on the road as such um, in terms of the first date that we have now is the, um, is the 25th of June uh, to be back in the Royal Horse Guard, um, taking into consideration all the restrictions that we have to in terms of health and safety and all that kind of stuff. We, but we certainly do look forward to being out and about again uh, and meeting people up front um, and would love to have you uh, there representing Metro Bank and, and this product because I think this particularly is great news to SMEs. Um, it's very timely. Um, it's something that is, um, you know, we, we've all gone through um, various challenges uh, in the last 12 months uh, of different natures and finance is, is at the top of that queue. Um, so products like this, I think, um, um, are, are widely accepted at the moment and uh, a lot of people will want to know. So um, we'd love you to pass that knowledge on, uh, perhaps at those lunches, uh, both in, in London on the 25th of June in the Royal Horse Guard and in, um, in Anfield in Liverpool uh, on the 30th of July. So they're the first two uh, events that we're going to be back up and running and we can't wait uh, to be up front in person um, in, in, in the summer months again. Great. So um, if that's um, all the questions on invoice finance, I'll hand over to, to David Ginn, my colleague, who's going to talk to you about all things asset finance. David, over to you. Thanks, Kevin. I'm just going to put my slides up. Just bear with me a second. Morning, everybody. So my name is uh, David Ginn. Um, I head up the direct asset finance team within Metro Bank. Um, I've had I've spent the last similar to Kevin really in terms of uh, time in the market. I've spent the last thirty years within the uh, asset finance market and and thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I've been with Metro for the last uh, four years, and um, that that time has been spent working out how we can best provide asset finance solutions predominantly for um, our SME customers, um, working alongside both our retail and commercial um, colleagues. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk about uh, roughly what asset finance is in very broad terms, um, what we offer within the market, a general market update. And I wanna to touch on probably what's the most important uh, bit of recent news, which is the, the fantastic gift the Chancellor of the Exchequer gave us earlier this month in the form of the new super deduction. So very simply, asset finance, it just enables you to go out and acquire the equipment that you need for your businesses without having to incur the full upfront cost. In addition to investing in new equipment, 
what asset finance also does is gives you the opportunity to release cash from maybe um, assets that you've already owned, maybe you used your own cash resources or other bank products to acquire those assets. And we do have the ability to be able to release that cash for you in the form of a sell and high HB back or sell and lease back. Um, but by far and away, the largest proportion of the, of the transactions that we get involved in is um, high purchase between three to five year term with equalized monthly payments. So very, very simple. A typical transaction would involve um, you going out, sourcing the, the piece of equipment that you need for your business, negotiating with the supplier. Um, we'll agree uh, credit terms with yourselves. The supplier will invoice Metro Bank Asset Finance. We enter into a high purchase or a leasing transaction with yourselves. Um, we we pay the supplier's invoice, um, you collect your equipment, and um, and then you pay us back over a monthly pay uh, on a monthly basis. Um, so effectively enabling the future income from the asset to pay for the asset um, as you go along. In terms of the market, so th yes, there was a drop in um, asset funding last year, but maybe not as much of a drop as you might think. Um, so there's about a 20% drop in overall uh, funding. Um, for, so for 2020, the FLA members funded about 27 billion of asset finance, which represents just over a third of all investment within uh, plant machinery and, and equipment. Um, by far and away, the largest sort of areas that we operate within are to fund cars, commercial vehicles, plant and machinery. And, and that's predominantly because the, the asset is our security in these transactions. And with all of those assets, there's, a, there's a, um, a predictable future value associated with those assets, which gives we, which we can then get comfortable with from a security um, perspective. Here's a, here's a sort of a range of sort of recent assets, you know, typical assets that we funded. So right from directors and um, employees, uh, company cars to delivery vans, trucks, um, manufacturing equipment, construction, all sorts, agriculture. Um, okay, so a couple of recent examples of deals that we've done, um, which gives you a flavor for the types of things that we do and and the sort of timescales involved in organizing asset finance. So um, the first one was a used DAF um, truck um, for 51,000. Um, so from the customer are actually approaching us to us actually paying the supplier uh, for this vehicle. Um, that all took place within a three day uh, time frame. Um, obviously that is dependent upon us getting all the right information when we need it, but it shows you what's, uh, shows you what's possible um, providing all, you know, the supplier does their bit in terms of getting invoicing out and, and, and such like. And then um, a slightly larger transaction for two uh, tracked dumpers um, cost was 185,000 plus VAT. Uh, we funded, agreed to fund those vehicles over a four-year term with a 5% deposit. We deferred the VAT for three months. Um, and then the proposal uh, from once we received the proposal to us actually then paying the supplier, that again took place uh, within five days. Um, so we can, you know, from when you've, when you've negotiated with your supplier, we can get these deals turned around um, very quickly. Um, however, it's clearly much better if you can give yourself as much time as possible because if, you know, there's nothing, there's, there's no reason why we can't um, approve the credit facilities you know, several months in advance of, of you actually finalizing the deal with the supplier or indeed waiting for, if it's a brand new piece of equipment, then there may be you know, several months of build time for the assets. So the sooner you approach us uh, to get the credit facilities in place, um, takes the pressure out of the situation for all concerned. And, um, and if there's any additional information that we need, then obviously we, we give ourselves a bit more time to um, obtain the information from you. In terms of our, in terms of our process, um, for assets costing less than 150,000, typically they'll be able to go through what we call our flow or low, low touch process. And we can, um, in terms of generating a credit decision, um, we can turn the actual decision in around uh, within a four hour process from receipt of all of the relevant information. Um, 
but I think probably one of the key things that really separates our approach from a number of our other competitors is the flexibility of our credit underwriters. So the credit underwriters, whilst they are a separate credit team, they work very much alongside my business development managers. And so the uh, credit underwriters enjoy coming out, meeting customers and really getting a good insight in terms of what makes your business tick um, and understanding how we can best support your business. And I, and, I, and I feel that that is quite a different approach to what you might receive elsewhere within the marketplace where there's a lot of credit scoring going on. <coughs> we, are, we, do, we do have a, um, a manual approach to the, uh, underwriting the larger deals and we really like to come out and get to know um, who we're dealing with. Um, in terms of in terms of some of the other added flexibility that we that's offered through Metrobank, um, we do offer VAT deferrals. So where the initial um, cost of the VAT can be pretty significant, um, we can defer that payment to coincide with your VAT cycle. Uh, we can also look at structuring deals where, in order to reduce the outgoing, the monthly outgoings as much as possible, we can build in um, a large balloon payment, which reflects the future value of that asset at the end of the financing agreement. Uh, as I've mentioned, we we're happy to look at funding new and used equipment. Um, we will re, we will look at re, you know, releasing cash for you in terms of refinancing assets. Um, and a, an increasing um, area that we're seeing a lot more of is for those of you that are working in city centres or low emission zones or passing through or delivering to, um, there's an increasing requirement for zero emissions assets in all, uh, uh, right across the board. And we're active in, very active in funding those types of assets. So the big gift that Rishi Sunak gave us earlier in the month, um, which was um, actually has, has, has meant that the capital allowance regime within the UK is now the most competitive amongst all developed countries. So we went from 30th in terms of competitive position as far as our um, uh, capital allowance regime um, was to now being the most um, the most tax efficient and competitive amongst all developed countries, um, which is and obviously that's been put in place to stimulate um, to stimulate economic activity within the marketplace and clearly within the asset finance marketplace, we're going to, we should be a, a huge beneficiary of that. And I, you know, I certainly hadn't seen that come in. In the 30 years that I've been involved in the market, um, I've seen 100% allowances, but I've never seen I've never seen more than 100% allowances being given. So hopefully that will be the, um, you know, the catalyst, the motivation for businesses to, you know, think longer term about their businesses with the assets that they need and take that as an opportunity to re, um, to replace um, the assets that, that are required to expand the business. Um, so typically the qualifying criteria is um, the assets need to be um, acquired between the 1st of April um, this year um, and over the, so the next two years. So it finishes due to finish on the 31st of March 2023. Um, if you if you've already entered into a contract to acquire new assets, but you might not be taking delivery of them until um, yeah, the next month or so, you might just want to check as to whether or not that that will qualify for the new super deduction. Um, so pick that up with your tax advisors. There is a specific caveat within the within the statement that says um, uh, the purchases shouldn't have been contracted before the 31st of March. So something for you to th just think about if you've, if you are hoping to benefit from that super deduction. Um, and without teaching anybody to suck eggs, but in terms of how this super deduction actually works, um, just for a bit of clarity, if you're investing in a hundred thousand pounds worth of um, uh, plant and machinery, that will give you a hundred and thirty thousand um, pounds of a deduction that you can take away from your taxable profits. So in terms of potential tax saving, what that means is at the current corporation tax rates, um, you would be able to save tax of 20, 24,700 um, pounds. So basically for every, for every 100 pounds that you're investing in plant and machinery, you're effectively saving 25 pounds in, um, in tax. So, like Kevin, um, here's some con you know, um, here's my contact details here, which will circulate, and um, my colleague Jamie, who is within the business development team, and we'd be really 
pleased to discuss any projects investment that you've got coming up um happy to take any questions now but also very happy to pick up with anybody over the next uh, over the next few days if they've got anything they'd like us to um talk to talk about or discuss put credit facilities in place for so any questions